Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our first Michigan Unitarian Universalist virtual megachurch worship service. Today, Community Unitarian Universalists of Brighton, People's Church in Kalamazoo, and Birmingham Unitarian Church have come together as one worshiping body. I would like to invite you, if you haven't already, to scroll through quickly and just see how many of us there are. It is such an exciting event. On my screen, I'm showing eight pages worth of participants, about 200 uh, screens, and there's more than one person on a lot of them. This is a great day, very exciting. Today's service is led by the team at Birmingham Unitarian Church. We'll follow the format that BUC has been using for these past few months. In the weeks to come, each church will take a turn leading the service and the worship style will vary accordingly. And at this time, I'd like to invite my ministerial colleagues, my co-conspirators in this venture to introduce themselves. My name is Reverend Julie Brock. I am the Minister of Community Unitarian Universalists in Brighton. I'm absolutely thrilled to be here worshiping with you. I get excited anytime I get to watch Reverend Mandy lead worship. Uh, I appreciate her brainchild of bringing us all together. This is what leadership looks like. BUC, y'all are lucky. And I really am excited to, um, I'm really excited to host you all on May 10th. Mm -hmm. And I'm Rev Reverend Rachel Lonberg from People's Church in Kalamazoo, and it's just such a gift to see familiar faces who navigated a different way to be here and a bunch of unfamiliar faces this morning. Uh, you know, so much of this time has been making adjustments and improvising, and it is such a gift to have something that is better because of this. <laughs> it doesn't make it, doesn't balance any of the hardship out in any real way. But, you know, I get to lead worship with a small person on my lap, which doesn't ha get to happen very often. <laughs> and I get to be with all of you. Sometimes happens. Yep, DeForest chimes in from the background. And it's just such a gift. So what a joy to be yep, with all of you today. Joy. Yep, a joy. It's from the peanut gallery. <laughs> And I am the Reverend Mandy Beal. I'm the senior minister of Birmingham Unitarian Church in beautiful Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, although I am broadcasting from Brighton, where I live. I am joined in leading today's service by BUC's co-directors of music ministry, Abha and Stephen Deering. And we are supported with a lot of patience and technical skill by our communications coordinator, Sarah Constantakis. Birmingham Unitarian Church is a welcoming congregation. This is a designation that demonstrates a commitment to doing the work of being fully inclusive of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender and queer individuals and their families. We are also a green sanctuary congregation, which is a similar designation for environmental justice. And although there is no such designation for racial justice work, we are deeply committed to that as well. Just a few quick notes about our service today. In an effort to, pre to prevent Zoom bombing and to ensure that everyone can enjoy the service with minimal distractions, BUC disables the chat box during our services. We also keep all participants on mute throughout the duration of the service. We will have a virtual coffee hour today. As we're gathered from across the state this morning, this is an exciting opportunity to get to know new people and maybe see some old friends. If you are worshiping with us for the first time today, we extend a special welcome to you. We hope that you'll stay after the service and get to know us as well. We have three announcements this week. First, today at 1 p.m., Cub will host a congregational meeting to present the proposed budget for fiscal year 2021-2022. Please note that Cub members will need to switch back over to Cub's Sunday, Sunday service Zoom link at 1 p.m. More information can be found in the Cub news. Second, from BUC's Social and Environmental Justice Committee, voting is an important way to get involved in our democracy, and there's a lot that you can do to help ensure that our country functions fairly and democratically. You are all invited to join us at Beyond Voting, a four-part webinar series 
where we can learn about big and small ways to be a part of the solution. Session one will be held this Thursday, April 30th at 7 p.m. The topic is Census 2020, what you don't know about the census in Michigan. This session will focus on the status of the census participation in Oakland County and easy ways that you can help boost those numbers. The Zoom link is available on the BUC website. And last, also from BUC. The Climate Change Resolution Task Force invites again all of you to a discussion of the film Chasing Coral. This documentary film explores what's happening below the waves, how coral health impacts our seafood stocks and solutions to preventing further warming of our oceans. On May 3rd, we will gather via Zoom to discuss the movie. That means that you'll need to watch the movie in advance. A Zoom link for that will also be posted on the BUC website. Thank you again, all of you, for joining us in this exciting morning or whenever you're watching this. Although we are not together physically, we are together in spirit and it is good to be together again. And with that, our service will begin. This morning's prelude is a Spanish romantic piece entitled Ballad by one of our favorite composers, Anonymous. Although we worship from our separate homes, we are joined by a multitude of Unitarian Universalists as we light our chalice. We light this chalice in honor of the wonder and curiosity that lives in each of us, that carried us through our childhood and that is ours to reclaim for us adults in this tender moment of challenge and fear. Our first hymn this morning is Where Do We Come From? Number 1003, if you have a hymnal at home. And this is traditionally done as a round. So as you get to know the song, feel free to repeat any of the lines over and over and we'll let it sort of develop naturally. Let's sing together. Where do we come from? What are we? Where do we come from? Here we go. Where do we come from? What are we? Where are we going? Where do we come from? What are we? Where are we going? Where do we come from? Where are we going? Mystery. Where do we come from? Mystery. What are we? 
hear now these opening words. Open the windows and the door this morning. Shake the dust from your heart and open up to joy. Open up to this time that we share. Our connections make us who we are. Let us be willing to be made anew. This is a time to form new connections, seeking out a new face from home or from afar. This is the time to deepen our connections. How are you doing? No, really, how are you doing? This is the time to challenge ourselves to hear a new word, to speak a new truth. In this virtual house of memory and hope, we join together from our separate lives and separate realities to witness the oneness and the wholeness of life. We have reached the time in our service where we ask for your financial support. In the spirit of love and collaboration, as our churches take turns leading the service, the offering will go to the congregation that is leading the service. Today's collection will go to BUC, and in the weeks to come, it will go to Cub and then to People's Church. So this is an opportunity to pay it forward. The COVID-19 pandemic has had serious impact on our economy and on our personal finances. But I ask you to consider if you may have saved some money by not buying gas or lattes or getting your hair cut. Perhaps some of that can come our way. Your contributions can be used sending can be sent using Venmo or through our website. Our Venmo username is at BUCMI, or if you navigate to our website, BUCMI.org, there is a Donate Now button. If you need to set up accounts through either of these giving platforms, I urge you to do so when the service is over. You can also put a check in the mail to us. I asked you to consider how much you've relied on your congregation in the past months and what you can do to support the good work of BUC. Please give generously. Today's offertory song is originally by singer-songwriter Natalie Merchant. It's called Wonder. And as you give generously, please think about all of the ways that you are a wonder to each of us in our community and to the wider world.
we move now into the time in our service that we have set aside for centering, grounding, and prayer. We begin with a sharing of joys and sorrows from all three of our communities. First, we have a joy. Reverend Rachel celebrated her 40th birthday on Friday. Welcome to your 40s. She is grateful for the many kind emails, messages, cards that she's received. And I am also so very grateful to have her as my mentor. And I'm happy to join in the well wishes for her birthday. Brian Lewis also has a joy to share. Brian says, we are full of relief. Our parents have had their medications all refilled. They are unable to return home at this time. This was a major challenge and now it is solved. We also have a note from David Greenquist, a little bit mixed. For those of you who are not Facebook friends with me or otherwise didn't get my message, I would like to let everyone know that because I work at Walmart and am considered an essential worker, you'll be pleased to know so far that I have not experienced any symptoms of this virus Please keep me in your thoughts and prayers that I don't catch it. And last, we have a note of concern from Mary Jo Larson. Our daughter Liz is sick from coronavirus, transmitted at the nursing home where she is a speech pathologist. Although she is otherwise young and healthy, we can't help but worry and she is feeling rotten. We appreciate your loving thoughts and concerns. I invite you now to move with me further into the spirit of prayer and reflection. Spirit of wonder and curiosity, we gather here this morning full of that sense of excitement, getting to know each other, wondering what it will be like to worship together, curious about what may come of this. During this time of concern and fear, may we be lifted up by each other's presence. May we find strength and comfort here. May we find a reflection of the concerns with us. May the joys and sorrows unspoken here that remain on our hearts be held tenderly. May we continue to find ways to grow together. May we be blessed in each other's presence indeed. May it be so, amen and blessed be. morning's reading is an excerpt from Fear, Essential Wisdom for Getting Through the Storm by Vietnamese Buddhist monk Thich Nhat Hanh. Just a, a note that this passage contains some ableist language. We all experience fear, but if we can look deeply into our fear, we will be able to free ourselves from its grip and touch joy. Fear keeps us focused on the past or worried about the future. If we can acknowledge our fear, we can realize that right now we are okay. 
right now, today, we are still alive and our bodies are working marvelously. Our eyes can see the beautiful sky. Our ears can still hear the voices of our loved ones. The first part of looking at our fear is just inviting it into our awareness without judgment. We just acknowledge gently that it is there. This brings a lot of relief already. Then once our fear has calmed down, we can embrace it tenderly and look deeply into its roots, its sources. Understanding the origins of our anxieties and fears will help us let go of them. Is our fear coming from something that is happening right now, or is it an old fear, a fear from when we were small that we've kept inside? When we practice inviting all our fears up, we become aware that we are still alive, that we still have many things to treasure and enjoy. If we are not busy pushing down and managing our fear, we can enjoy the sunshine, the fog, the air and the water. If you can look deeply into your fear and have a clear vision of it, then you really can have a life that is worthwhile. These past two months have been tiring, frustrating, and difficult in ways that we could not have imagined. And now we know that it will continue on, at least for a few more weeks, but we also know at this point that we don't know how long it will be. Our quarantine experience is full of big feelings. It has been from the beginning, and those already big feelings are amplified by the ongoing uncertainty of it all. We're feeling this at a primal level. We worry about our finances, our loved ones, our own health. We're coping with a rapidly changing landscape and an awful lot of unknowns. We have good reason to be afraid, and yet being constantly afraid has its own set of problems. Fear impacts our physical and our mental health, and it can impact the relationships that we so desperately need right now. We're trapped between something that is very scary and the serious issues that arise when we are constantly afraid. Our emotional lives, our feelings and our thoughts, they are complicated to say the least. We are born with a set of core emotions. As we grow up and our thinking becomes more complex, our emotions become more nuanced and more complicated too. Our feelings are influenced by our past experiences, our perception of the present and what we think might happen in the future. They are also driven by our sympathetic nervous system, which is responsible for the fight, flight, and freeze responses. This is part of us that has evolved to respond to real or perceived danger. What was once an actual tiger chasing us is now the thought of a tiger chasing us. Feelings are both cognitive and physiological, and so our experience of our feelings changes over time. And all of this together makes it very hard to recognize and to deal with strong feelings like fear. When we are afraid, that sympathetic nervous system, that fight, flight, or freeze is activated. And this can cause an increased heart rate, shortness of breath, the production of adrenaline, and cognitively you might experience racing thoughts or intrusive thoughts or confusion. And these are all clues that your body is responding to a threat, even if you don't consciously feel threatened. You may not think you're threatened, but your body thinks it is. Emotions can also be a clue that our sympathetic nervous system is responding to a threat. The fight response often feels like anger, 
or irritability. And the freeze response feels like you're exhausted and you need to take a nap. The flight response feels maybe like you're trapped and you need to run away. When we're afraid, we can move through different levels of each of these responses, which means that we might feel a flight response at one time and a freeze response at another, both caused by fear, again, reinforcing that our feelings are very, very confusing and it's hard to know what's really going on with us. And it's understandable that we would all feel a little bit of fear right now. We're dealing with something that is legitimately scary. And because this is also new and it changes rapidly, our fear might feel completely different than how we're used to experiencing fear. In other words, again, you may not realize that that underlying core emotion is fear because it is showing up differently in this context. For me, my fear is being processed through the fight response. I'm finding myself feeling irrationally angry in new and profoundly weird ways. During the few times that I have ventured out into the world recently, I have found myself wanting to yell at people for not wearing masks properly. Now, prior to this, when strangers have annoyed me, I am, I've been pretty good at just ignoring them and going on with my life. And I'll have you know that I have never once yelled at a total stranger. But here I am ready to just completely flip out over anyone who is wearing a mask below their nose. Why would you wear a mask below your nose? It, it doesn't matter. What matters is that I can't control their behavior. I could never control anybody's behavior, but it feels more important now because I'm afraid of the impact that their behavior might have on my health. In normal circumstances, I might be annoyed by another person's behavior, but under the shadow of fear, my reaction is elevated from annoyance to anger. What helps me to de-escalate my anger is a sense of curiosity about my reactions. In the moment, it is hard to be curious about a primal response, a core emotion, but I found it really helpful to take a few deep breaths and then ask some wondering questions. I start with, I wonder what I'm feeling right now. And my irrational mind in the moment answers something like Hulk smash. And I continue on and I say, okay, well, that sounds like anger. Why am I angry? And my irrational mind answers because that person is doing something dangerous and stupid. And I say, okay, dangerous to who? Am I really in danger? I'm in a car with the windows up and that guy is 15 feet away in another car with the windows rolled up. Am I really in danger? No, no, I am not in danger. I am afraid. The danger isn't real, but I am afraid because I perceive that it possibly could be real in the future maybe because the world is a scary place right now and I'm angry at that person because I'm more comfortable being angry than I am being afraid. Being angry feels like doing something. Anger feels like action because of those physiological responses. When our blood is pumping, it feels the same as having done something. But all anger really does, especially in our situation, is keep us in a heightened state of emotion and active stress response. Being afraid launches the stress response that fight, flight, or freeze, which I've been experiencing as fight, and it turns into fear and so on. And this creates a cycle that continues until it is consciously disrupted. Strong emotions, especially fear, can absolutely consume us. If we can separate ourselves from our reaction, 
we can bring a note of objectivity to our emotional response. When we meet our fear with compassion and curiosity, rather than an impulse to bury it and never look at it again, then we stand a chance of being able to move through it. When we bury our fear, we only allow it to grow and to fester. Fear never stays buried for long. By bringing curiosity and wonder to our reactions, we can explore them with a sense of spaciousness and we move from being afraid to experiencing fear. An old and apt illustration of meeting fear with curiosity is the image of the shadow of a monster on the wall that turns out upon further examination to be only a mouse with really good backlighting. Fear is just the overblown shadow of that tiny mouse, which is nothing but vulnerable. Our vulnerability and its protective layer of fear deserves to be treated with love and compassion. Our fear is a cover for something very tender and it tries hard to protect us, but it doesn't always serve us. When we understand what's happening in our mind and our body, we improve our chances of stepping out of that cycle of fight, flight, or freeze. It's okay to be afraid. It's normal to be afraid. But in this spring of uncertainty, we don't have to always be afraid. Feeling our fear and being curious about it can help us to lay down that fear and then pick up some hope, joy, compassion, and more. This ongoing process is tough. We're not always going to get it right. But let's try it anyways. And let's be kind to ourselves throughout the process. May it be so. Amen and blessed be. Our closing hymn today is When Our Heart is in a Holy Place, number 1008.
through this world, which is indeed scary and difficult, but take with you a sense of wonder and curiosity. Take with you compassion for your process, your compassion for each other. Hold yourself and others in love. May it be so. Amen and blessed be.